taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County. If you enjoyed the save, drop a like on the video, that'd be amazing. Now, I thought we'd start on Matt Wolf today. Uh, he joined us, uh, I think, in January last year, or it might have been in the summer, actually. Uh, he's doing all right, playing for the under-age sort of the under -age squads, essentially. Made 11 appearances, three goals, four assists, which is not bad from the centre of midfield. I think he's got a pretty bright future, in all honesty, and it's good to see that his progress is slowly coming along in the right way. We've got him in mentoring groups, hopefully, to get rid of that temperamental personality and try and move things in the right direction, but at the end of the day... Like, you've got good first touch, solid passing, vision, work rate, teamweight, all that kind of stuff is reasonably all right. And he's still only 18 years old. A long way to improve for this lad, I'd have to say. Now, in the last video, we should have a youth intake hopefully come up in today's episode because it's the 14th of March now. We've still not had it, which means it has to be soon. So I'd like to think it's going to be sometime between the Leeds and the Stoke game, uh, given that that's what we've got coming up. But uh, in the previous episode, I said I would show you guys how you can set the database up the way I have. So I'm going to cut to past me no face cam anyway um to show you how to do that briefly whatever league so i mean i've just got manchester city here so obviously if you are planning on moving leagues and you want to turn on other divisions but i for with the Notts county save just have those that's sort of set it up at but then you have this option now most people you would generally go to large but what i've done and what this the way this works is you go to advanced and then you essentially just go to continents like this and then you just add all the continents and just tick all of this stuff and i'll show you what i mean by that it's africa then go to asia and just do the same thing for all of these and you'll notice at the bottom the player count is growing so once you've added all the continents you should have it looking like this about three hundred eighty-two thousand. now you don't have to have all of these on if you don't want to you could sort of you can decide but obviously it will say that which is understandable and that's on a computer this computer has a pretty this has got a, a ryzen 7 3700x in it which is a fairly solid processor um but you, you'll still get this. But the thing is, I was running this same database with Notts County on the older system, and it was reasonably okay, like pretty solid. Um, it's obviously a lot faster on this current one, but I still think you can get away with that. And it's a lot easier than loading all the other leagues. That's all I do to set up the database. Um, and then there you go, basically. So we're going to jump straight into things today. I've tried to mess around with the tactic again, because it's a weird situation we're in where I'm so used to us winning games and doing well that when we're not, it, sometimes it's hard to get my head around that. And I always try to think that there's maybe a little bit more we can get out of this. And I think that we're pretty much operating at maximum capacity right now. And we're going to lose games in frustrating ways. But that doesn't make it less frustrating um, just because we have to accept that. So uh, please excuse my frustration sometimes because we really do need to be doing better even when we're not. And uh, I, I will not settle for anything less than that. So we lost at home to QPR in the next match. Because of course we did. Our defender will get the ball completely by themselves. Play a really... St Usually they're running with it. Play a really stupidly short back pass. The keeper will run out anyway. And the, the, the striker always gets there first. Too many of those uh, I'm seeing going lately. And it's annoying as hell. Particularly when the two combine. Um, frustrating. And I think that, that's cost us points lately. But this one was just annoying because of the fact that... Well, firstly, it was a penalty uh, for QPR that gave them their second goal. But it was the first one that really boiled my piss. And I'll show you it now because it really does deserve a segment. This goal... Annoyed me to no end. Firstly, Booty here. What is he doing? But that isn't the worst bit. Watch this. This made me want to throw things. Akinola gets the ball and then just clatters it straight. I mean, what is going on here? QPR was still pretty solid on the night, but it was so annoying to go 2-0 down to that and then a penalty. Uh, we then got back into the match from McPhee, who's actually been really solid. Uh, and then managed to level up late on with Regan Booty, which was beautiful. But then, of course, they went straight down the other end and equalised. Uh, sorry, went back in front immediately straight from the kickoff. Frustrating. Booty solid, but... Uh, every time we yeah it's two step forward one step back at the moment and so in the next game i thought i'd try something out a little bit different we switched back to the old style uh, that we played and looks a lot more solid in this one however i made a slight change it's like a hybrid between the two so it has no overlap on the right hand side it just kind of uses a lot of the other style that we used to play before but with the no overlap so we're trying to get the best of both worlds mamacon oz gave us the win in this one uh, which was really nice to see we got a win at hillsborough in a completely dominant performance like they had one shot on target in the full game. We should have scored more goals. Oz and Burton were creating chances for days for each other in this match and just could not seem to put them away. But we got the victory in the end, and that was the main thing. So I took that kind of knowledge into the next game against Preston. Unfortunately, we went behind very early on through Tananga. And then we immediately equalised from the kickoff. Quite annoying, just, just it's too often. Um, but Dropkick McPhee gave us an equaliser here. He's actually been really good lately. He's up to eight goals in the league this year, which is not bad. Second highest scorer in the entire team. Um, and then Regan Booty gave us another one. It was great. Regan Booty scored a few more goals now. A lovely volleyed finish from him to make it 2-1 at deep down. I thought, right, perfect. 
Unfortunately, they didn't quite go straight down the other end and score, but it was essentially that. The next highlight was just bam. And it was a back pass ball through Liam Dillap. Scores. Annoying. 2-2 uh, two -two at D Deepdale. Frustrating one, but they did have a lot more shots in total than us. But I think chance creation, ah, if anything, I think maybe we got away with that one still. But then against Birmingham City at home, it was another one of the same sort of story. Tyrese Campbell gave us a very early lead as Fjortov. Uh, Lervik put the ball across for him and he scored. Um, duhaney has been out suspended in this period. Unfortunately, they then did get themselves an equaliser in the second half, which was annoying, but what can you do? Thankfully, though, we went back in front again in the 69th minute. Ron Coates put a back heel straight into the path of Campbell. He thrashed it home for 2-1. I thought, yes! Uh, but then immediately they scored from the kickoff with a back pass goal. End me in the face. Um, yeah, I think the, the back pass goal thing it comes down to inexperienced mentals from some of our younger players because it's quite a young squad. And I think that might be part of the reason for it. But it's just annoying to see it so happen. It's happened so frequently, uh, particularly straight from the kickoff, so obviously. And again, I think that comes down to some of the concentration levels of some of the players, perhaps. But a two-all draw against Birmingham. Two games which we were winning 2-1 and should have seen out. We just couldn't quite do it. To show you what I mean by this, like Southampton are literally two points above us. We've slipped down to ninth now. But if we'd have won that match, we'd have gone above them. Uh, oh, no, we wouldn't. We'd have been level on points with them and just right there on the cusp of the playoffs. We just can't seem to quite get the consistency right. So let's get into Leeds today. This is, I mean, I say this is huge. Leeds are now completely flying clear and are actually chasing after Watford for an automatic spot, uh, really. And then we've got Stoke, who are currently 15 points clear into the playoff spots right now, which is utterly insane. They've only lost three games this year. Um, they could probably get 100 plus points if they're not careful. So that's what we're going to hopefully try and do today. I mean, if we take any points against Leeds and Stoke, that would be huge for us. And it would just keep us in touch with Southampton, who are really determined to throw away that playoff spot. Adrian Mutu is managing Leeds now. So Regan Booty could do with another rest, in all honesty, and I think he might have to get one. Uh, it's a shame, but he just cannot seem to... He just... He can't play as much as that, unfortunately. Hey, would I bring back in my man Duhaney? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. So, I've tried out Stephen Walker again, because Brandon Fleming just... I don't know. Left-back spot is a real issue for us. Um, McPhee has just ticked over to a better season than Ron Coates now. So, there is that. Hopefully, Burton can do a solid job for us today. But you'll see the slight change in tactic now. This is the one I'm going with at the moment. So, essentially, it's the old style of play minus overlapping on the right, because we didn't want Duhaney trying to overlap a guy who's on attacking. And I guess I wouldn't mind so much if we were just being played off the park by a lot of these teams. It's just frustrating because we're actually doing really well in a lot of these games and really hanging on there and just making silly errors. But hopefully today, Meadow Lane leads late kickoff. Lovely old job. We've had the form of a sort of 11th, 12th kind of place side for most of the second half of the season. And at this rate, we're kind of returning to the mean and probably will end up finishing there. But the main reason I think for me switching back to this is I just wanted to tighten up at the back a little bit because I felt like we still got a decent amount of goals going forward, but we were conceding so many. We went from the best defense in the league to a uh, comfortable bottom half in terms of defending side of things. And good save from McGee there. And see what we're capable of. Dewsby Hall oh, and, oh, and the, the ball is loose. And Hughes. Oh my, how did he save that? I thought the keeper was on the floor there, and somehow he's kept that out. Okay, so I'm not getting a lot of possession, but the shots and chances coming for us as well. Oh, Ty Tyrese Campbell scores from a corner? That's unusual. Robbie Burton puts a great ball in, and we have a 1-0 lead against Leeds. Very surprising, to be honest. Um, usually this is aimed at a centre-back, but Tyrese Campbell's just made a run through, and he's managed to find a volley inside the box. Bit bad defending there from Leeds, but we lead. But Leeds have always got the, ca the capabilities to put a ball throw behind and score a goal. And another top stop there. We've got away with that again there. Hmm. We need to get a bit more of the ball in the second half. We've kind of given up the ghost a little bit since we went in front. But maybe we can mug them off for once. Right. Well, one nil up through Tyrese Campbell. We don't deserve it, really. But what I would say is Robbie Burton's been excellent. Ron Coates, again, poor. Hmm. Just lower the tempo slightly. And try and press leads a little bit more. I don't want to get stuck in because I often find that just gives you cards. What happened to distribute quickly? <laughs> Dehaney. Another side, maybe. Find Coates. Oh, Burton. Options. McPhee's in. And a good side by Clarkson. Okay. It's going to be one of these cases. If we win it, we've got great counter-attacking chances. But if they keep it, therein lies the problem. Tipped over by McGee. McGee, he's got to look long. Look, look at this space. There we go. He's finally found the right pass. Coates has dropped it back because of reasons. Actually, to be fair, it wasn't a bad idea. Duhaney, but Coates needs to be making a run for him. And he's not really done it yet. And nope, he's just lost the ball. But keep pushing him into that corner. And Coates has done it. Can he square it? Campbell! Uh, rather, like the pass to him was actually quite poor. Um, good save by McGee there. We have to be doing better in that situation. Like the longer passing, I think would actually work for us if it wasn't for the. Oh God! Now Dehaney's about to get red carded as well. Oh, D'Amico, mate. Maybe actually drop the passing directness because the problem is they're not finding people with the out ball. We're going to go very defensive for the remaining 25 minutes of this match and just see if we can avoid. Like, 
I don't know, avoid losing. Maybe get a draw out of it or something. Not exactly sure what I was thinking by doing that when we could just shape up a little bit more sensibly. Final 20 minutes of this match and just see if we can time waste our way through it. But I think it's unlikely we're going to be able to. But you never know. Coatsy goes past one. That's better. Got to find the ball. He's found Tyrese Campbell. It's a decent first touch from Campbell. It and again, it's such a it's a way more difficult chance than him just being through. Uh, okay, never mind. We, we've got to just accept this sort of thing and move on, I suppose. And we need, really do need to do this. Ron Coates has just dribbled past a few people, put an absolutely delicious ball in here. But Campbell's actually got players around him this time. The keeper should be doing much, much better with that. It's, an, it's a decent effort. I suppose they can't save everything, but we're 2-0 up now. We've got to just hold on. Everything for time wasting for the final 20 minutes of this match. See if we can hold on to a, what would be an incredibly big win. The fact that Tyrese Campbell scored another brace, though. He's going to be up there for top scorers in this league. Sure, that's too deep. Good block. I'm not sure what they... Do they know what time wasting means? Here we go. Walker out wide. Take your time, buddy. And there we go. Notts County 2, Leeds United 0. We did it. We actually pulled off an absolute mugging there. I think Leeds were definitely the better side, but we got it. Two goals for Tyrese Campbell. We're going to be missing players for the next game, though, and that does concern me. Right then. Notts County announced new intake of youth players. Come on, give me a five star. Oh! Oh my god! Oh, gee! Well, bugger me! I think we've just hit the mother... Oh my giddy... Three, two and a half... St Fairly good rating for the senior team. Costel Trofin, or Trofin. They're all attacking players. Just what we need. That's insane. Right, okay, let's start with not him, though, because let's just start with... We're going to have to. Sean Lancaster, right-sided winger. Determination of 17. He's already quick as all hell. Not the best in the air, but he's got decent dribbling and crossing, free kicks, first touch, passing of 10. Composure isn't amazing, but that's 17 flair. Uh, sorry, 14 flair, 17 determination. Sean Lancaster, everybody. A right-sided... We got three of these guys. This is a potential, like, first-teamer for this right-hand side. Shoot some distance. Okay, we'll have to get rid of that, because that's not good. Brendan Milnes is a... a, a whoa, ho, 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 ho. Again, decent determination. Tries long-range passes. He's got 11 passing, 10 vision, deep line play. Look at that. 16 technique, great first touch, decent flair again. Oh, my God. 16 years old, and we've just got two absolute worldies. Um, two English worldies, but but now is the big one. Costell. Oh, oh seven composure. Uh, no, 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 no. Just stop complaining. He's got 12 dribbling, 14 finishing, and 10 first touch at the age of 16. 16. He's our third best striker at the club at the age of 16. Good determination. Decent passing. He's five foot nine, so he's not the tallest, but he's fast. He's decently agile. He's not great in the air, which is fine. Good dribbling, finishing first touch. The composure of seven is the one let down for me, but I guess we can get him to work on that in some ways. I, I still think this guy is absolutely monumental for us. Costel Trofin. Uh, someone let me know how to pronounce his name. What we got in terms of his actual scout report? So it worked to do on his crosses. Fine. Operating at League Two level, right? Okay intelligence okay i am a huge fan of this guy this guy could be absolutely amazing for us he could be like a a jonas svenningson level player for us oh my god i'll sort out contracts for him and stuff after we've done this episode okay so i've signed him up for a contract along with the other two three-year deal because that was the most i could offer plus a three-year extension so in theory six years i'm setting him to work on his final third to work on the composure and decisions because i think that's going to be the most important factor for him in terms of him becoming a good player things are just going to happen we're just going to have to accept it but my day has been made by the fact that we might well have just found probably potentially the hero of the save this guy could be that guy um, i genuinely have that amount of faith in him today against stoke like we've got no chance but that's fine we're 26 points behind them but on the plus side, booty back. So not the end of the world. Duhaney suspended, unfortunately. So the bench, I'm going to go with Costel Troffin, because why the hell not? O'Shea, Doosby Hall, Oz, Fleming, Lely, and Ricky Griffiths. I just, I want to give him a run out at some point. I feel like he's got that amount of ability. It's worth noting that one of Stoke's few defeats this season did actually come against us. So, you know, there's that. But then some of our best performances this year have come against decent sides, apart from the Watford game. <laughs> apart from the Watford game and the Brentford one. But we beat Saints twice. Uh, we beat Stoke earlier this year. Like, we've got good results. We beat Hull. They are so far clear of everyone else, it's unreal. And, oh, no! Oh, got away with that completely. Barnsley winning their game, though, which is a frustrating one for us, as they're now one of our rivals for that position, along with Hull and virtually everyone else below us. Ampama, good save by McGee. Walker, here we go, booty could turn. Round the top for Tyrese Campbell's on side. Oh, difficult opportunity for him, but maybe he could do a bit better. But again, Booty's looked up and found the right ball. That's what I want from him. Okay, half time. Um, I don't know how we're not behind here, but we're not. <laughs> we're just, We're just not. Okay, it's so a couple of changes. Um, we're going to go after uh, Apodoma, whatever his name is, a little bit more. And also, um, 
oh, oh sorry ampoma a little bit more and also campbell's going to just roam from position a little bit just to try and find some little pockets booty's ball and oh and hermanson there nearly why the hell not let's give him 20 minutes let's give the young romanian lad wearing the number 69 a little bit of time in this match hermanson back for booty coats oh he's got to look for somebody and well as it happens trofan's got it can he dribble past his man he's gonna have to get a shot away here i think and he's got the shot away and angus gun gets to it but hey he did something. It's that time in the save again where I massively overvalue anything a young player does because I really want them to succeed. Hermanson cut inside and he smashed it into the side netting there. As things stand, we will get a nil-nil draw at the Britannia against a team who are that far clear at the top. I would take this as a very, very strong performance from us. Oh, no. Cleared. Whew. In fact, the results against Stoke and Leeds would actually be tremendous results. To keep, keep two clean sheets in there as well. Oh, no. That's going to be a bit too deep for him. And that's out of play. And I think that's going to be it at the Britannia. I think we're going to level... We're going to hold Stoke to a nil-nil draw. I will take that. Um, what I saw of Trofin or Trofan was all right there. Regan Booty was excellent. No surprises. Um, I will massively take that. We could have had a chance to win it, but then so could Stoke. They look very, 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 very good. But we've managed to hold them. Three passes. Curtis Jones completed in the entire game. I said there's a lot to be said for a result like that. As much as we're still in eighth place, we're not far off. We're still only two points off the playoffs right now. And Southampton have slipped right down. We're definitely going to be finishing no lower than ninth, I would say. But there's still the outside hope that if we can just string a few more good results together, like we're doing, we might be able to sneak in there. Because when you look at our recent form, yeah, sure, there's a few more draws in there, but there's a lot less defeats that are suddenly. We're unbeaten now in five league matches there's two wins in there and three clean sheets all of a sudden we're just starting to find a little bit more of that um bite that we had earlier in the season and that's really really nice to see and we've got great youth prospects coming through i think we can finish off the season in the next episode uh by going to barnsley and bristol city well we've got to go to barnsley i mean that's huge going to probably our biggest playoff rival in there as well for and the sheffield united in there too this is gonna be crazy difficult but if anyone can do it we can so if you've enjoyed this episode might have been a bit of a long one i apologize drop a like on the video um, tell me what you think of Costel Trofin, or tell me how to pronounce his name, that'd be awesome as well. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.